Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend Steve. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood. That's the name I used to go by. I go by Malin nowadays. I'm a trans woman. Deal with it. This is episode 439, and welcome to the House of Skin. Yes. Uh, I'm just going to come out and say it. Our movie this week is uh, the David Cronenberg 1970 film Crimes of the Future. And Bunny, why do you hate me? Why do you hate me? COVID exploitation leaps to <laughs> mind. That's that's a good point. That's a good point. Okay. Uh, I hate you, but let's not go pretending there aren't reasons. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I have had a crazy weekend. We're going to get to that. I've got a short <laughs> shaft so we can uh, run down the clock a little bit. I'm really excited. I've got a great monologue. I've got a really good chap. I got a bunch of things to run out the 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 meter. And I've got a really funny beginning where we're going to be talking about David Cronenberg because I'm not sure if a lot of people know about David Cronenberg, but he's lived uh he's lived a pretty crazy life. He's lived a pretty crazy life. Uh director, editor, producer, um songwriter. You know he wrote Thank occasional God I'm a country occasional boy. actor occasional actor yeah he wrote thank god i'm a country boy for um uh, what's his name um john denver yeah john yeah. denver yeah um you know gilmore girls it was actually based on his life it was i kind of yeah. thought so oh. yeah uh yeah uh david cronenberg totally team jess yes so uh so yeah let's 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 do this opening Yes. I want to talk about cartoons for a bit, okay? I really think you're going to like this. Okay? There is a type of cartoon that you don't really see on TV anymore. Uh, it, and and once I'm done talking about these cartoons, I'm going to put you on the spot, Bunny. We're going to do a fun game, okay? Okay. Okay. So there's a type of cartoon... That used to be on TV all the time. You don't really see it anymore. But this is what they do used to do on the regular sa on Saturday morning cartoons. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six examples of what they used to do on Saturday morning cartoons. Number one, Gilligan's Island. Did you know that the original TV show Gilligan's Island lasted a mere three seasons? And made less than a hundred episodes from 1964 to 1967. That is shocking to me because I, it yes, was it on is. TV constantly, constantly when yes. I was growing up. It is <laughs> shocking that it had so little. It had so little time, but had such a big cultural impact. Apparently, it, it became such a staple of reruns in the it, that they made. Three TV film sequels between the 1970s and the 1980s. It was such a seminal sitcom in American history that a whopping two Saturday morning cartoons were based on this live action television show. Yes. In 1974, they aired The New Adventures of Gilligan, which was basically just a cartoon version of the original TV show. Yes. It was just a cartoon version of the TV show Gilligan's Island. The same basic premise, most of the same voice people. Um, then, almost a decade later in 1982, round about my neck of the woods, they aired Gilligan's Planet, which was a follow-up to the new adventures of Gilligan. The plot of Gilligan's Planet was the professor finally figures out a way to get off of Gilligan's Island. He builds a rocket ship to escape the planet, but it's too strong, and it sends the crew of the SS Minnow into space where they get stranded on an island-like planet 
And because there always has to be an animal, Gilligan gets an alien lizard pet named Bumper. It's not the most original cartoon. It's like the cartoon equivalent of the Brady Bunch adding Cousin Oliver. Yes. The Brady Bunch in space is basically what it was. They got a well-known popular TV show. They turned it into two cheaply done, uh, unoriginal cartoons. Here's my second uh, example. The Brady Bunch. Yes. They got a wildly unoriginal Saturday morning cartoon as well. This aired during the fourth season of the live-action Brady Bunch show, and it had the Brady kids going on wacky adventures with a gaggle of animals, including a talking magical bird and two pandas for some reason. Because yes. so many times there has to be an animal. There has to be an animal in the. Well, with that one, because because that one in particular, I used to watch as a kid. And yeah. what I always wanted to know is what the fuck happened in that family where all the kids now have to live in a treehouse in the yard. Yeah. To be fair, there have been numerous times where I wanted to make the kids live in the backyard. Yeah. So I understand that. I don't have six kids, but I do have five. And hey, making them live in a treehouse in the in the yard. That's a dream. Yes. <laughs> and right. Hmm. See, I don't know because like I, I, I'm a New Yorker and now like I'm a Coloradan. So <laughs> I can't really. You were a Californian. Are there many right. pandas just wandering around? <laughs> all the, all over the place. The pandas everywhere, and they are blaring Tupac. Always. Big old boombox yeah. on their shoulder. No, 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 Yep. They're smoking bamboo. Yeah. So, yeah, the Brady Bunch also got a cartoon, an unoriginal cheap attempt to cash in on a sitcom. Example number three. Happy days. Happy days. Now, I thought, I, I've mentioned the Happy Days cartoon on the podcast before, and I got it wrong. I thought, I remember the Happy Days cartoon because the introduction was narrated by Wolfman Jack, and I would watch the introduction over and over again. I never watched the cartoon, but I watched the introduction to the cartoon. I thought that this was yet another sitcom cast, but in space premise but no the show was called the fawns and the happy days gang and it aired in 1980 and according to wikipedia quote it has been described as a knockoff of doctor who really okay like someone said happy days is popular what if we made the Fonzie Doctor Who? And that is this cartoon. What the hell? So the plot was the Fonz, Opie Cunningham, and Donnie Most. Donnie Most. They're hanging out with Mr. Cool, the talking dog, because there always has to be an animal. Yes. Um, when they're visited by a teenage time traveler from the future who has a time machine flying saucer that is broken in like the 1950s and so uh the font <laughs> fixes it you know with his magical fist because he just yeah. hits things and it fixes but then an accident happens and now they're pinballing through time it's henry winkler's doctor who and it's freaking weird have you have you watched some episodes there's a few on YouTube. Yeah, that's kind of it, what I was thinking. It's it's <laughs> yet another cheap cartoon attempt to cash in on a popular television show. Oh, this one's the worst. Okay, this but that is... was uh, that was also like just cartoons. Yeah, that's how they were. That's why you had a Jackson Five cartoon and an Osmond's yeah. Brothers cartoon and a Beatles cartoon. Those Beatles ones, 
I, me and uh, M and Mal used to watch them all the time when they were kids, and I loved them because it was a great song in the middle of the worst animation. Yes. And the worst plot. Oh, it was the worst. I loved it. Okay. And all of those were all... Oh, you, those cartoons are all over YouTube, too. A lot of these cartoons are so unremembered that you can just go and watch Gilligan's Planet on YouTube if you wanted to. Yes. It's fascinating. Oddly so, never a Dusty's Trail cartoon. Go figure. Dusty's Trail? Dusty's Trail? You don't remember What's Dusty's that? Trail? No. Oh, Dusty's Trail was... Uh, was... I, I figure when the time period, it must have been in the 70s somewhere, and it was basically a, a direct ripoff of Gilligan's Island uh, okay. with Bob Denver. Yeah, they, with they, Bob Denver. Yeah, they, it, was, it was a stagecoach going to California, hmm. and they would, they would run into problems. Huh. So you had you had the stage driver who was played by Forrest Tucker. Forrest Tucker. And his his sidekick Bob Denver. And then you had a smart guy. You had a saloon girl, a saloon singer, whatever the fuck she was. Yeah. Another girl, I forget what she was. She was probably just all American. And a, a a a wealthy couple. Nice, yeah. Basically, Gilligan's Island, right there. And this was Dusty's Trail. It was exactly <laughs> Gilligan's Island. Yeah. And you man, can't find it on YouTube. Bob Denver, man. Uh, he was great as a beatnik. Yes. P Gilligan's Island became so so much a staple of television that people forget he did other parts. He was a great freaking beatnik. Yes. In uh, uh Dobie Gillis. Uh-huh. They keep wanting to call it Darby O'Gill, but that was that movie where Sean Connery sings. <laughs> uh okay. So this next example is the worst. Laverne and Shirley. Yes. Got a cheap in the army spinoff too. Yes, in 1981, ABC aired the cartoon <laughs> Laverne and Shirley in the army, where they were privates, and for some reason, which should not be surprising to you, because we've been over this, their commanding officer was a talking pig named Sergeant Squealy. Because there always has to be an animal. Yes. Uh, like, what the fuck, Laverne and Shirley? What the fuck? And <coughs> you give a spin-off <coughs> to Laverne and Shirley <coughs> and not to Lenny and Squiggy? <coughs> that is a crime! How dare <coughs> you? Lenny and Squiggy? The cartoon that basically writes itself. Yes. Yes, it does. I mean, come on. Hello, Cheryl. I mean, that... It, I I have the entire first season of that cartoon in my head. Easy. Okay, so a short aside here. I was actually legitimately thinking about the Lenny and Squiggy movie. <laughs> and... And that got me thinking about, like, okay, so it's like the 60s, but they're dressed, you know, with their hair all slicked back, singing doo-wop. And that got me thinking about sha -na -na. And then uh, I came up with an entire film. Okay? okay. Here's the movie pitch. It's a fish-out-of-water film about two bros from Jersey with leather jackets and chains on it, and they've got one of those switchblade combs, and they got their hair all slicked back with pomade. <coughs> and they head to Woodstock in 1969 for one reason and one reason only, to see their favorite band, Sha-Na-Na. -na. 
<laughs> they're huge Shanana fans. So they're two like freaking greasers from Jersey at Woodstock with a bunch of hippies. Yes. And there's all that there's is... like a, that's a great I can see the whole movie. That is good. Hey, fuck this hippie shit. Bring out Bowser. You know, and then and then they're walking around like, man, fuck these hippies. Hey, <coughs> watch it. I'm walking here. Why don't you go smoke some reefer? And, but then they see that like some people are naked and having sex and stuff. So they decide that they're going to pretend to be hippies. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> hey, baby, what's up? I like free love and weed. Let's go do it. Hey! You know? And then eventually, you know, they 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 start <clears throat> doing weed and they realize that, that um, Shanana sucks. And by the end, they're just one of the hippies. It, it, I can see the entire film. Yeah, I, 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 I see where you're going, and I like it, and I appreciate it, and, and I, I think you should go out there and make this movie. Uh, yeah. I, I am uh, picturing more of, of Lenny and Squiggy crossed with, like, train spotting, where they're just shooting up heroin and experimenting with their latent homosexuality. Nice. Yeah, uh, and they, listening to Shanana, and you know. listening to Shanana, yeah, this is gonna be a Shanana heavy movie. The Three Stooges, although not technically a sitcom, their 1940s and 1950s shorts began airing in syndication on TV at the tail end of the 1950s. So, headed into the 70s. They were the most popular American comedy troupe. So, of course, they also got a cheesy, cheap cartoon spinoff. In 1977, CBS aired The Robonic Stooges, where Larry Curley yes. and Mo were super heroic robots. Real shit. Yes. And again, if you're interested in watching that... Go on YouTube. It's horrible. Um, and then here is my final example. The Partridge Family. The Partridge Family. Of course, I remember they got its own. existence. I don't remember it. Okay, I'll jolt your memory. Of course, the Partridge Family got their own cheap cartoon spinoff as well. This one was baffling because it was called The Partridge Family. 2200 A.D. And without any explanation whatsoever, the Partridge family is living in the future for reasons, I guess. Yes. Just imagine the Jetsons, but now they're an annoying-ass family of wasps who sing pop songs. Yes. That was legitimately 100% what the entire show was. Funny, what I am getting at is this. It doesn't seem hard to make a cheap animated cartoon spin-off. No, it doesn't. Based on a based on a live action TV show. A bunch of people have done it. A bunch of crappy shows are out there. They also gave one to the uh uh they also turned the Harlem Globetrotters into like the Fantastic Four. Yes. That was another one. Where they all had like superpowers, <laughs> but they didn't really have a sitcom. But it's time to play a game, Bunny. I'm going to mention some TV shows. And you spit out plots. And you don't have to take too much time to think about them because the creators of these shows that I just talked about sure as shit didn't spend time thinking about them. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to spit out some shows. And you're going to come up with some great, great, it, they don't have to be that great. They uh, they honestly don't have to be that great. But you're going to come up with some ideas, and then we're going to put them on TV. We're going to make a ton of money, okay? Okay. Okay. Are you ready, Bunford and Sons? Yes. Okay. Lost! Lost. Wow. Okay, lost. Lost? Uh, well, first... 
they befriend what turns out to be the rather adorable smoke creature. Uh, yes. And that that smoke creature helps them to solve crime. Of course. Usually Scooby-Doo involving style. a ghost of some sort. Yeah. It's gotta be Scooby-Doo style. Yes. And like 60s hippie music. Okay, I got another one. Okay. My Three Sons. My Three Sons. Uh, my Three Sons uh, would... First off, in going to any cartoon, you have to ditch the adults. So this is yeah. just literally the Three Sons. And they have an alien friend, uh, and they ride around in his spaceship, uh, honestly not doing much at all. They get into trouble, but, like, they get in, like, you really don't know what's even going on. Like, what did Ernie do this time? Yeah. You know? Uh... And after the end of the half hour, they get out of the trouble. Okay. Here's my pitch. Okay. My three androids. Hmm. Uh huh. He builds three robotic sons, and each one has a different power. It. I thought of it from the Robonic Stooges. Because he is the original son. He's eaten them? Yes. Oh, wow. That took a dark turn. And to cover up, he made android sons. Yeah. Nice. Okay. X-Files. X-Files. In my mind, there's there's just like one answer to this, but okay. what do you got? I, well, it's already goddamn Scooby-Doo. I mean... Yeah, you gotta Scooby-Doo that crap. Yeah, you gotta I mean, Scooby do that shit. Period. So, like, all they need is the animal. Yeah. Uh, and for for the X Files, I think I'm gonna go a Hanna Barbera style hound dog with a Sherlock Holmes cap and a big magnifying glass and a pipe. That that's that's good. Yeah, that's good. I was kind of thinking more of an aardvark kind of a thing. Okay, you know, uh, and they chase ghosts and aliens. I mean, it's the fucking X Files. Yeah. Okay. Now this next one, I've got a really good pitch for, but I want to hear what you have to say. Night Court. Night Court. Night Court would basically just be Night Court, but it would be Night Court in space. That's so exactly what be, I have here. It would here. be the intergalactic court, yes. Night Court. So it would it, it would really almost be the same thing, except like they would be bringing in different aliens who have done different things, and they would have to do the little trial kind of thingy. That's exactly what that was. Exactly my pitch. Yeah. Yeah, and it it'd be alien people coming in for space court. Yeah. But a bunch of humans. He you know, stole my Glognor. Yeah. I I'm pretty sure John Larrick kept three. Yes. I don't think Marky Post has a lot on her schedule. Didn't she actually die recently? I don't know. I know that uh Judge Harold T. Stone is dead, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Is Bull still... Is Bull dead or is Bull alive? I don't know. I also don't want to look it up. Uh, uh, welcome back, Cotter. I'm shocked that this didn't get a cartoon. Because the Sweat Are Hogs you sure were big. It didn't? It did not. And I am shocked by that. The Sweat Hogs were big. John Travolta became huge. I'm gonna let her in. Whoa. Gonna let her in my life. 
Letter in my life. I used to unironically like the John Travolta song Letter In from when he was a teen heartthrob. Yeah. He 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 did it once on American <laughs> Bandstand and it's it's pretty great. So they were so okay, so they are on and I think we have to keep Gabe Kaplan. I mean, he's not exactly a parent. Yeah. So we have to kind of keep him in here. But they are on a field trip going into the city on the F train. And Horshack does something and shoots the F train into space. Yes. And of course... For their animal, they have, which would be an alien, the first alien they, they run into, would be an alien pig. Oh, welcome to <coughs> Orbit Cotter. Welcome to Orbit Cotter. Right there. Boom. <coughs> you gotta have a name that just explains all of it. Laverne yes. and Shirley in the Army, Gilligan's Planet, the Robonic Stooges. Welcome to Orbit Cotter. Boom. I, I think I need I need to rethink this now. Go on, hit me. Okay. With this new knowledge, hit me. <laughs> B- breaking Bad. <laughs> and you mean Breaking Bad. Ten minute warning. Uh, yeah. Well, Breaking Orbit Bad. I, I, here's my pitch. Yeah. They all met as babies. Yeah. Yeah, you have baby... um, Oh, I like this. Baby Bob Odenkirk. Baby dad from Malcolm in the Middle. Baby Jesse. Yeah. Baby whoever that guy is who ran the chicken place. And it's... You know. and And it's all episodes like involving trying to run trying to be babies and run a meth lab at the same time you know like like they would be stacking up a whole lot of stuff to try to get the Sudafed out of the medicine cabinet before mom gets home yeah i was thinking i was thinking they're making some sort of an addictive baby formula yeah and so, and, and make it kind of Hogan's Heroes because they're all at like a daycare, but the daycare is really strict. So yeah. they've got to do it secretly, you know? And uh, Bob Odenkirk, he's he's the like slick lawyer baby that gets everyone out of trouble. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. And then we can spin that off. When that cartoon is done, then a baby... Uh, Odenkirk can get his spinoff Better Call Baby. Better Call Baby. Huh? Yeah. I think it's I think it's a decent idea. And buddy, did you hear the big news that community is finally getting a movie? I have heard that. Yes. Finally, six seasons and a movie is coming into fruition. And let me tell you, uh Mal still has yet to process it. You know, because we have waited so long. Yeah. Us diehard community fans that it's hard to believe that it actually is happening. But now community, you... you definitely have to stuff all of those in a in a van. Okay. With a talking dog. They were born for that. Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty good. They actually did a cartoon episode. Now that I'm now that I'm thinking about community, there was a cartoon episode where they were in G.I. Joe. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. It was such a good episode. Uh, can you think of any other shows that could benefit from a uh, cheap cartoon spinoff, Bunny? I was going to say Quantum Leap, but they just rebooted that. Yeah, and they're not doing it right for me, so I can't watch it. My plot was so much better. I'm just waiting for like that time in season three where they finally bring Scott Bakula back for some cameo. Yeah. Because the ratings are going in the shitter. That is eventually going to happen. I I pictured a girl who 
like really Pride likes River things like world. In Search oh. Of and Sightings and things like this. You know, back in the day when conspiracy theory was fun. Whatever that show was with Riker. Yes, yes. Fact or fiction? Yeah. Yeah. So she would be really into this, and she would be into Bigfoot and aliens and things like that. And through that, she heard of the Quantum Leap Project, because the Quantum Leap Project is a failed fucking project that nobody wants to talk about. Yeah. You know? It lost them a brilliant scientist, even if he was a fucking wackadoo. Yeah. You know? So she's into that and, you know, and Jack the Ripper and all those kinds, you know. Yeah. And one by one, as she's growing up, they all wind up falling by the wayside because she finds out this one isn't true about this, this one isn't true because of this, except for the Quantum Leap Project. She actually starts finding out more about the Quantum Leap Project and then goes on to become a physicist because of it. And turns out that that Dr. Samuel Beckett is real and was a genius. And so she then duplicates the Quantum Leap Project with the goal of finding Samuel Beckett and bringing him back. That's a that's much better. I don't like the fact that they're doing this, but they're you know, it I I want Scott Bakula back, Yala. Yeah. Now I the, want Scott Bakula. The other difference is that this it, this show is more in like a command center because yeah. she she is not stuck. She can leap wherever she wants. Yes. She's leaping to find someone. But only in his timeline. Yeah. That's interesting. I like that. But the but like the timeline but like that's it. The timelines whenever she gets there, he's not there. Yeah. Like they just keep you know, like she's not getting the timelines to sync. Yeah. I think if I'm not mistaken, I think the I think the 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 woman in the new reboot is like the daughter of Al from the original, I think. Yeah. But I need more of a of a of a connection to the original before yeah. I fall in love with this show. And right now that's not there. And but you know at the same time it was one of those shows that it was a really great show at the time, but television really kind of sucked then. Yeah, I'm happy that they finally have a budget. Yeah, television then didn't have the budgets that they do now or anything yeah, like that. I mean, so it was a good show, but it better. was kind of crap too. Yeah, special effects are better for TV right now. And it's like that's where that's where I'm happy for this new quantum leap reboot but uh hey if if the quantum leap reboot goes bad hit me up nbc because i've got an idea the quantum kids the quantum kids they keep traveling to different people in history and learn important things what we're here at the signing of the Declaration of Independence. What's that? Let me tell you. Yeah. Well, I would follow that up with the Anarchy Kids. Nice. Who would, and what they would do is they would leap into the bodies of various famous people before they got, fa- before they got famous. Yeah. And try to crush their success. Nice. I'm Elon Musk. Hey, I'm a piece of shit. Fuck you. Yeah, nice. I like that. That's good. Uh, so yeah, so that's been our monologue. Really good. I it, it, they don't make these anymore. These uh cheap cartoon knockoff 
shows anymore, but you can still do it. There are shows out there. Like, I don't give a shit about Friends, but if the Friends were all dogs and yeah. they lived in, in, like, a pound, I'd watch that. Yeah. No problem. There are shows I wouldn't watch that I would watch if they were rebooted as cartoons for kids. <laughs> so, <coughs> just bringing that out there. So that is it for our monologue. We are going to be taking a short break. And when we come back, we're going to be doing Steve's Historic Approximations, uh, a bit that I refuse to change the name of because Shap just sounds really good. We're going to be talking about an old episode of the podcast, and we're going to be talking about a musical instrument that no one should ever play. Okay. Because it goes against the Bible. It goes against traditional family values. I'm really excited for this. It's a really good one about music, musical instruments, and inventors. And I think you'll really like it. And it's not that long. So afterwards, we'll be running out the meter. I think it should be running out the clock because then we can call it ROTC, which was the fake army people in high school. Yeah. They were the ROTC people. Anyway, we will be right back in just a short moment with more exciting fun 